So George W. Bush, as we all know, is a war criminal and he's the one who initiated drone wars in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. But the drone wars didn't really get increased until Obama took office. That was one of the first things he did. He ramped up drone strikes in Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia. And these drone strikes were killing so many civilians that they were forced to pull back on these drones because they just weren't hitting the targets that the CIA was claiming they were hitting. And they weren't acknowledging all of these so-called collateral damage that they were creating. Now, once Donald Trump was elected, one of the first things he did when he took office, just like his predecessor, Barack Obama, was ramp up drone strikes yet again. And he increased them exponentially, which is something that you shouldn't do because Obama made this mistake and he had to learn the hard way from his mistake. So knowing that this leads to civilian casualties, why would you do this? Well, this is all about helping out the military industrial complex. And also, Donald Trump has a lot of neoconservatives in his ear. But it's not just as simple as him ramping up the drone war because he's actually doing more to loosen restrictions that prevent us from killing even more civilians. So as Maha Hilal of Common Dreams reports, barely a month after President Donald Trump announced plans to deepen and extend the now 16-year-old war in Afghanistan, reports surfaced of plans to expand another signature Obama-era policy the drone war. Specifically, the New York Times reported in late September that the administration is relaxing Obama-era restrictions on who can be targeted and removing a requirement that strikes receive high-level vetting before they're carried out. According to the paper, the new rules would also ease the way to expanding such gray zone acts of sporadic warfare into new countries, expanding the program's already global footprint. Across administrations, the use of drones has increased exponentially throughout the course of the war on terror. Even before the rule change, Micah Zenko of the Council on Foreign Relations estimated that the pace of drone strikes and special forces raids had increased from one every 5.4 days under President Obama to one every 1.25 days under President Trump. In addition to increasing the pace of these operations, the Trump administration has also loosened guidelines designed to protect civilians in areas like Yemen and Somalia and overseen a notable increase in civilian casualties in war zones like Iraq and Syria. We need to understand the excesses of the war on terror as a trajectory. The abuse of power under one administration leads to the abuse of power under another. Trump may be driving it more recklessly, but he's still operating a machine the Obama administration built. And when you look at the numbers as to just how many civilians are dying as a result of drone strikes, I don't even know how to put words to it. So if you, if you look at a report from Air Wars, there were 1,300 reports of civilian deaths in Iraq and Syria in the month of March alone. That was an increase three times compared to February. So that was in March. Now this is what Donald Trump is doing now, which will exacerbate that problem even more. So Donald Trump is a bloodthirsty war criminal. He's doing all of this knowing what will happen. But what did he say again during the campaign trail? You have to take out their families. Oh, that's right. We have to take out the families of ISIS. Well, it seems like we're killing more innocent civilians than actual terrorists. So what's the point of these drones then? If we're not actually taking out the targets that we are intending to take out, then why would we continue to do this? When you get these terrorists, you have to take out their families, take out their families, take out their families, take out their families. Even if we're not calling this warfare and wars, I mean, we're invading these countries. We are occupying Pakistan, Yemen, Somalia. How can we be in so many countries and not have the American media even bat an eyelash? It makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. The drone war, I mean, besides the Iraq war, it's one of the greatest injustices of our time. I think this is going to go down as one of the most egregious things in the history books. Because how could it not? The rate to which we're killing civilians, is it's not acceptable. So just like George W. Bush and Barack Obama, I think it is safe to characterize Donald Trump as a war criminal. And doing things that will 
knowingly lead to the deaths of civilians... You're a war criminal, and now guess what? It's time to lock Donald Trump up. It's time to prosecute him. Now, the, the funny thing is that all of our leaders, be it George W. Bush, Barack Obama, and now Donald Trump, presumably, they don't want to sign on to the International Criminal Court. And this is because they know that if they subject themselves to the jurisdiction of the ICC, then... They're going to be the ones that get arrested because they're all war criminals. It doesn't matter. I mean, there's continuity when it comes to warfare. It doesn't matter if you elect a Democrat or a Republican. They're going to continue to kill civilians abroad with your tax dollars. Um, meanwhile, we're going to complain about the cost of uh, health care in this country and tuition-free public colleges and universities. It's absolutely egregious. Our priorities are completely ass-backwards, and Donald Trump is a warmonger that should be prosecuted just like his predecessors. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.